I'm Bonnie Francis. We're talking about events that are happening in Queen Anne's County, and one of them is the Senior Summit, which happens May 15th at the 4-H Park here in Centerville. I have with me today one of the vendors that's going to be there. His name is Matthew Muche, and he's with Heart of Hands Home Care. Yes. So first off, um, tell people what Heart of Hands does. Okay. What do you offer? Uh, Heart of Hands Home Care is a faith-based local, non-franchised home care service for the elderly in the community. Uh, we grew out of our own personal experiences dealing with our family members, uh, some very close friends of ours, and God's just put us on this path to be able to go out and help the local area community. So where are you located? We are actually located on Kent Island, Okay. Um, and our service area is anywhere from Kent Island down here to Centerville. I even have uh, a client who's um, down in uh, Henderson. All right. If someone needs your services, what type of services, home care, what does that entail? Uh, well, home care services, we uh, provide what's considered companion plus care so help with active daily living assistance such as uh, light house keeping, uh, helping a client get dressed uh, to take them to uh, the doctor's appointments to grocery shopping uh, to do medical reminders as far as the medications are concerned uh, all of our uh, Associates are all uh, CNAs, okay. so they're certified nurses assistants. Uh, all of them have at least five to 15 years of accumulative experience, uh, either on the clinical side of things or whether or not they've taken care of their own grandma or grandpa or aunt, uncle, or mom and dad. All right. If um, someone isn't sure if they need your service, they could call and get information if yes, they can't they can. make it to the summit. Yes, they can. Um, what's your number? My direct line uh, for my mobile is 410-913-4212. Okay. And you have the website. And we do have the website. It's heartofhandshomecare.com. Uh, uh, and then that goes directly to me or to one of my associates. So when you're out at the summit, what types of things will you you just will you have brochures? Will you have things there? What we will have brochures. We will also be uh, auctioning or not auctioning, but raffling off a few uh, mementos. Okay. Um, and then also, I'm in the process of trying to get uh, an Alzheimer's uh, Maryland Alzheimer's organization. Uh, representative to sit with us as well so that we'd be able to help provide some information as well for those area seniors who are dealing with Alzheimer's which is a major problem that we're facing today. Okay so and the, and the type care that they might need would be different exactly. you know and, and it's kind of hard when you're assessing that. I know with my sisters, we have phone calls between each other. Right. Do you um, have people that just have questions about that type of thing, that call? Um, you know, what do I need? Do I need something right now for them type of thing? Um, if we get a phone call uh, inquiring about some of the situations that are arising because of Alzheimer's or something like that, I can direct them uh, to the proper medical treatment or doctor or something like that. Um, that is the best way to, to do it. Um, I'm not, we're experienced, uh, but it should be, you know, one of the memory clinic in, an, in Easton, for example, uh, you know, those right. type right. facilities. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but as far as the facility or the programs you provide, is there an evaluation? Does someone come out or does someone just call and say, we need this service? How does that all work? Well, what I really try to do is that if I receive a phone call inquiring about services, um, I will set up an appointment. I will go out, speak with the client directly or the loved one, because a lot of times it's a, a both together right. or it's right. an either or scenario and to kind of assess what their needs are uh, to see whether or not we can help with them or not um, and in the end if we don't work I can at least provide some information or assistance with them if 
we're not able to provide those services. Okay. That say, for example, the, the client has gone beyond staying at home by themselves or beyond what our care would be able to provide, um, then we can transition, transition that. I know that for a lot of area seniors, it's a very daunting and scary thing for them to be able to leave their home. Yeah. And especially, I have one client now who has lived here since 1978. He and his wife retired here um, and bought a home here and they, she passed away after 60, 67 years of marriage. Wow. And so for him to even spend the night someplace else after living here for 35 plus years was a very difficult thing for him to have to do. Right. And so we've helped him transition into that as well. Well, that's wonderful that there's services out there that, that do that type of thing because it, it is hard emotionally mm -hmm. for, for people like that. And, you know, they need people to come up and encourage and be there to, to help. Um, an additional thing that uh, we try to do, and it's based on a case by case, but um, a lot of times family members are not even local. Um, you know, we could have a client who lives here, but their family member is in California or Nevada or some other place. And so a lot of times it comes down to being becoming a trusted agent or an advocate for our care recipient uh, when they go to the hospital, who's going to voice up for them. Um, being a caregiver is more than just, I don't know, taking out the trash or doing the dishes or providing food. It's also being able to be that li first line of defense to provide advocacy for right. the client. When they get to the hospital, uh, we can call the family, we can let them know what's going on and so forth. Uh, and also we keep a, a journal of what is going on. We know our care recipients better sometimes than the family, than the family does yeah. of what's going on. Yeah. And that's really important. Um, because well, yeah, yeah, someone's got to keep track of it, mm -hmm. and that's, yeah, that's what I do with my sisters, <laughs> with my mom, <laughs> exactly. you know, someone is, is the one that's the, depending on what doctor and who's taking mm -hmm. them and that type of thing. Exactly. Now, when you first um, introduced the, co the company, um, you said about being faith-based. Um, what difference would, you know, how does that play into it? I think the, the main difference is, is that our sole purpose is to provide services and strive to glorify God as much as we possibly can. Our tenant is to, as scripture tells us, uh, to take care of the widows and orphans. Mm -hmm. And for me, that is an important message that we all have to do. Um, that's, that's it. <laughs> Bottom line is you do all things as if you're serving the Lord. Exactly. It's just like you're serving Him. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, you, you you would expect to see more compassion and caring because that's what you're called to do is love. Exactly. So, well, we thank you for coming in. Thank you. Um, hopefully people will come stop at the table and, you know, see how your services could help them. Excellent. So... Have a good day. You too. Thank you, Bonnie. All right.